Good morning and welcome to our online service. I'm Chaplain Amy Bauman and we meet here every Sunday as a community of believers all over the globe. If this is your first time joining us, I just want to give you a special welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you found us online. And if you have been watching with us over the last couple of weeks, you will know that we have been traveling through the Lenten season, making our way to the cross, looking a little closer at ourselves to, to see what are we believing? What do we believe about ourselves? What do we believe about God? And how can we let go of the things that we've been carrying around so that we can fully receive what the Lord did for us on the cross as we make our way there. It's uh, two weeks until Easter, uh, so we have an exciting time. We still have two weeks left to kind of unpack what we've been talking about so that we're fully ready to receive um, just that glorious day, Easter morning, and all of the promises that, that come with that. Today we are going to start off with worship. We're going to watch a quick video and then dive right into the sermon. And I just pray that it will be a blessing to you. Before we get started though, let's open with prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for each person watching. And I just pray, Lord, that um, in this space, in, the, in this next time frame, Lord, that you will meet them exactly where they are, that you will speak directly to their hearts, that you will provide for them and give them peace, open their ears and their hearts for what it is that you want to say today, Lord. And we just thank you. We thank you for your word and your promises. I just pray that you will anoint me with the Holy Spirit and that I will speak your truth with love and that we will come away from this service today refreshed and renewed with our eyes completely focused on Jesus. Thank you for this time. We love you, we, we praise you, and we bless you. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open with worship this morning. And times when you're 
So if you've been following along with us over the last couple of weeks, my prayer is that you're going to be ready to hear this next step as we take this next step of the journey. And really it's important as we make our way to the cross to understand why are we doing this? Why are we looking at who we are as Christ? Why are we understanding the misconceptions that we have about God? Why are we letting go of the things that we're still you know, carrying around every day, whether those are burdens or worries or unforgiveness? Because that's what we've been looking at over the last three weeks. So why? You know, why have we been doing that? Because in two weeks, we're going to be celebrating Easter and, and the gift that Jesus gave us in, in what he did on the cross. And if we don't look at the things that we are thinking incorrectly, if we don't unpack the lies that we have been believing, all of the distractions that the enemy has given us, well, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss the importance of what Jesus did on the cross and how God has been restoring us back to himself. And in this act that the sinless man did for us, he brought us back into the presence of the Lord, that we have eternal life, that we are now joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So many gifts were given to us. And if, if we can't understand how we're potentially missing it, well, we're going to miss the gift. And, and that's why the series is so important. And that's why we've been uh, going through the steps week after week to make our way there. And so today we're going to be talking about, you know, what will we leave to follow? And maybe you never really asked yourself that question. And I really think that it comes down to like three different um, contents or, or three different situations or three different um, places where maybe people are at in their faith. First, right now you're in the process of learning about Jesus and you haven't yet made a decision to fully follow him. So, so your number one category, you know, you're really kind of checking out who Jesus is, what he did, and you haven't fully accepted him into your heart. And then there's a second person. Um, you believe in Jesus. You believe in, in what he did um, on the cross and, and you're trying, you know, to live your life. But Jesus is asking you to dive deeper. Jesus is asking you to surrender more. And, and he wants you to reprioritize your life. And you're, you're not quite sure you're ready to do that. And then there's a third category of people. And that third category is you've been, you know, follow Jesus. You followed him. Uh, you, you believe in him. But something went wrong in your life. Whether it's something that someone did to you or maybe sin that you committed and you've stepped away you've stepped away and you are kind of in this waiting area you're kind of in this um you're not going forward you're not going backward you've just you've stepped away and you've stepped out of the presence of god and we want to address each of those situations today maybe you fall into one of those categories and if you do, I just pray that you'll allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart as we unpack each one. So if you are just learning about Jesus and, and who he is, it's important for you to um, find a community of believers that can help pour into you. It's important that you find a church or an online service like what this is and keep renewing your mind so that you can learn more and more about Jesus and who he is. You're going to want to look at the first couple of books in the New Testament, right? So that you can understand um, how Jesus was brought into the world and how he lived among us as a man and how he um, went to the cross and died for our sins and how the new, the, the early church was started and his disciples. And so you're going to want to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and uh, just to get your feet wet. You're going to want to know um, what John 14, 6 
says and means when it says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you like believe in God and you, and you believe that God is out there, but you still aren't sure about Jesus, his son, Jesus is the one you, you need to get to know. Jesus is the one that you need to believe in so that you can enter into the fullness of what God created and receive all of the gifts and, and receive everything that Jesus did on the cross. That's the crucial um, difference is you can believe in God, but if you don't believe in Jesus, his son, you're never going to get there. You're never going to understand the full relationship. You're, you're, you're never going to get past just knowing that there's a God. And what Jesus did for us on the cross when he died, a sinless man, that took away all of our sins, past, present, and future sin, and gave us the ability to step into the full presence of God and to have everlasting life, an eternity in heaven. You see, what we have right here, right now in this world, this is just temporary. This isn't where we're going to be forever. And when we someday die, because we are human and we're, we're all going to die, there's this life afterwards that is forever. This, this is just a blip on the radar compared to what we were going to have in heaven with Jesus for eternity. And so if you're wanting more information about Jesus, you're going to want to obviously pay attention to the rest of the sermon, but you're going to want to keep uh, diving in uh, and knowing to know more about who he is and what he's done for you and the plans and the purposes that he has for your life because he loves you and he died for you and he's coming back to take us home and you want to make sure that you're ready for when he does. And if you've been considering asking him into your heart, I wouldn't wait much longer. I would, I would take full advantage at the first opportunity you have to invite him in to live in your heart. For that second category of people where you believe in Jesus, but he's asking you to dive deeper and, and to reprioritize let me spell that out for what that means. If we look at Matthew 6, 24, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's, that's challenging because none of us like to think about taking up our cross. None of us want to, to think about what do we have to sacrifice or give up, you know, to follow Jesus. And when you think about what Jesus did, that, that was gruesome. That, was, that had to have been awful to watch. That had to have been awful to go through. And, and we, don't, we don't want to have to give up anything. You know, we, we don't want to have to... Um, suffer because Jesus did. And so diving deeper means giving up something that we love in our flesh. And as we watched the video, there was a whole number of things that, that people were, were giving up to follow Jesus. Now, Jesus doesn't say that we can't have any fun. Jesus doesn't say that, that we can't garden and we can't golf and we can't, you know, love our government and, and um, you know, be politically active in what's happening in our, in our world. He, he didn't say that we can't have money, that we can't, you know, do fun things and play video games and, and have me time. He never said any of those things. But how do we dive deeper if the things that we're doing in this world are stopping us from diving deeper? If, 
if you're spending all of your time playing video games and watching television and you say that you don't have any time to go to church or any time to read the Bible or any time to spend with God, well then you're prioritizing the things that you like to do and you're not allowing the Lord that time to renew your mind, that time to grow your relationship, that time to take up your cross and follow him. It's not easy to surrender. It's not easy to surrender the things that for us are comfortable and safe, like security, like finances, like jobs, like our me time. You might be saying, Amy, I work 40 plus hours a week and I have a family. And if I get a little bit of me time, the last thing I want to do is sit down and read like Leviticus or numbers. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when we put God first and we go to him for everything that we want, everything that we need, and we chase after him as the very first desire of our heart, it's amazing how he takes care of the rest, that he gives you enough for um, refreshing of how much sleep you've had at night and what kind of day at work you've had and enough energy to come home and take care of your family and enough time to have some me time to read a good book or watch a movie or go on a walk. You see, the Lord doesn't want us to give up the gifts that he has given us. He wants us to put him first. And when we seek him with all of our heart, everything else falls into place. And I think that's sometimes the disconnect is, well, if I'm going to be a Christian, I have to give up all this stuff. Well, first of all, what kind of stuff do you think you have to give up? And secondly, where did you read that? And thirdly, it's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. And if you have a relationship with someone, you're spending time with them. You're talking with them. You're, you're getting to know them just like you would a good friend. And, and I think that's sometimes where the struggle is, right? Because we can't see Jesus with our physical eyes that we just kind of tend to ignore him. And we have to be able to see him with our heart and want to get to know him, want to spend time with him and, and want to fully celebrate what he did for us on the cross. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. When was the last time that we were able to hear God's voice while we were golfing, while we were playing video games, while we were watching a movie? That's what we have to kind of put aside and, and be willing to leave behind so that we can hear his voice. So that we can set aside time each day to do that. So we can fully quiet the noise of the world down to hear his, his still quiet voice inside of us that says, I love you. I have a plan for you. I want to help you in this area of your life. Do you know what you need to do to take these next steps? 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16 says, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passion of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. We need to be able to separate ourselves from the world and read God's word and understand what we need to know to step out fully into that life of a believer. 
and fully receive everything that Jesus did for us on the cross. We have to create space to do that. And then lastly, John 15, 16 through 17. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is where we get distracted. The enemy, and we've been talking about him for several weeks, how he comes to steal, kill, and destroy and distract us from who we truly are in Christ. And so we get so wrapped up in the world and feeding our flesh with all the things that we desire and doing all the things that we, we want to do that we lose sight of why we're truly here that we are the sons and daughters of the Most High King, that he has a plan for us, and that we are to go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And while the enemy is distracting us away from the path that the Lord has for us and takes us all the way over here, before we know it, we just think that this world is it, that this is all there is. And and when I die, I'm just not going to be here anymore. And so I better take in everything that I want to do while I'm here and throw out all the stops and and feed my flesh with everything I want because you only get one life. That's a lie. Like I said, this is just a blip on the radar. This is just a tiny fraction of what we are going to live in this fullness that we have in Christ. And when we are done here in this world, we're going on to another one. We're going to step into eternity with Jesus Christ. And that's where he's preparing to take us. And if we're not careful, the enemy is going to distract us and we're going to miss it. We're going to miss it. And and so if Jesus right now is inviting you to dive deeper and to put him first and to set aside the things that you have been, uh, that have been filling up your time and, and taking you away from the Lord, he wants to talk to you this morning and tell you, he wants you to realign your priorities. He wants you to dive deeper. He wants you to know the full story, the whole truth, everything he's saying to you so that you don't miss it. So that what he did on the cross for us doesn't pass you by. So that you can fully step into being his hands and feet for yourself, for your family, for your community, for all of those around you. If he's telling you to dive deeper this morning, surrender your will Leave what you have been following and chasing after and follow him. Maybe you're in the third category today. Maybe you did follow Jesus. Maybe you you did give him your life and something happened and you stepped away. And, and now you're so full of guilt and shame because you've been traveling this other path and you just think there's no way that he still loves me. There's no way that he can forgive me. There's, there's no way that he would ever take me back. Well, then I'm, I want to speak directly to you today. And I want us to look at John 21 verses 1 through 19 and unpack that a little bit. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? 
No, they answered. He said, throw your net onto the right side of the boat and you will find some. If you've ever been fishing with a net and someone says, just throw it on the other side of the boat, you would probably be pretty angry because it doesn't matter which side of the boat the fish are going to, you know, be under the boat. Jesus has a sense of humor. However, when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. They were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So we read in these verses that Jesus meets Peter and the other disciples by the Sea of Galilee. They went out early in the morning to fish, but returned with nothing. The critical question to ask as we read these verses are why the disciples are even fishing in the first place and why is Jesus waiting for them on the shore. And to know that, we've got to go back. Back to the crucifixion and Peter's denial. Back to the three crows of the rooster and Peter's betrayal. Back to the uncomfortable, and to the sin. You see, we always go back to where we knew in the past when we feel like we've let God down. We go back to what we knew then. Peter was a fisherman. Peter was brought on by Jesus and said, you'll no longer you know, catch fish, you're going to catch men. And so he went back to what he knew, which was catching fish. This is where he was the most comfortable. This is where he felt secure about who he was. It was back before he ever met Jesus. Back in the days when life was simple and all he had to do was go out in a boat and drop a net and catch fish. This is where he knew who he was and what his purpose was. The world made sense to him when he's out in the boat catching fish. But what I love about this and these verses is that Jesus meets Peter and the other disciples right where they are. Jesus didn't call him into the synagogue or to the temple. Jesus didn't call him over to another town and talk with them and minister to them there. Jesus went to the Sea of Galilee. Jesus went right to the shore and asked them, are you catching any fish? He met them right where they were. And Jesus even helped them catch fish. And in the meantime, Peter is brought back to that night when he, when he stood by this fire and he lied three different times about knowing Jesus before the rooster crowed. Jesus had told him that he would deny him three times. And Peter said, no, Lord, no, I will never deny you. I will go to you until death. I will follow you until my life is over. I will never deny you, Lord. I will, I will never uh, go back to my old life. I will always chase after you. And yet 
Just as Jesus said, Peter denied him three times and the rooster crowed. I can't even imagine what Peter had to have felt like denying Jesus, right? He was living with him, walking with him, serving him, you know, loving him, trusting him day in and day out. And, and then all of a sudden, I don't know Jesus. I don't know who he is. Have you ever done that? Have you ever, you know, spent this much time making the right path, following Jesus, doing everything that he said, and then you jumped off course? You jumped off course and you're like, I, I could never go back. I could never go back to follow him because I, I messed up so bad. Maybe you got into drugs and alcohol and, and you were walking as an addicted person for, for a long time. Maybe you had an affair. Maybe you um, gambled away your money and you left your family in desolation and you are just struggling to find your way back. And you're, you're thinking, there's just no way that the Lord could really love me after all of that. There's no way that the Lord would take me back, love me again, forgive those sins. Those sins are unforgivable. But the three times, the number of times that Peter denied Jesus, Peter is asked, do you love me? And each time Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. In those three different times, Jesus gives Peter another chance to leave what is familiar to forget the past and to follow him. He's giving us that same opportunity now as we're making our way to the cross to fully receive everything that Jesus did for us. And he's asking us today, are you really following me? You know, are you following me fully, 100%, all of your eyes and your focus on me? Or are you just doing it because you think you need to check a box. You think you need to do it because it's just something that is being asked of you. You know, you have this whole list of things that you have to do, right? You have to, you have to golf, you have to garden, you know, you have to play your video games, you have to, you know, do all this stuff. And then down at the bottom is spend time with the Lord. Maybe Spend time with the Lord isn't even on your list because you feel so far away from him today that you could never return, that you could never um, meet him by the shore and have a meal with him. My friends, this is what we're talking about to take that next step towards the cross is that We have to realign our hearts, realign our priorities and ask ourselves, what do I need to leave behind? What do I need to leave behind in my life to follow Jesus? Because what happens in this world is just temporary. And and the things that the world throws our way are distractions from who we truly are and the journey that we need to follow. And the devil's good at distracting. He's good at lying. He's good at pulling us off course and saying, oh, you don't need to spend time with the Lord today. You really need to go do this over here because you like this. This is easy. You, you love to do this. Go see Jesus on Sunday. Go see him at church. You don't need to have a relationship with him during the week. I mean, really, what is he expecting of you? Well, The Bible tells us that he's expecting everything from us. We are to follow him. We are to love him. We are to seek him first. And then everything else will fall into place. This is a hard lesson because in our flesh, we don't like to give things up. 
We don't like to leave things behind. But what I'm asking us to do is to look with our spirits, to look past what we see in this physical world and look to what's coming to us. Look at the gifts that the Lord has given us in dying on the cross, forgiving us of all of our sins and giving us the freedom to step from this world into the next for everlasting life. We need to ask ourselves, what do we need to leave to follow Jesus? What does that look like for you today? Let's pray. Father God, this is a hard lesson. This is a hard teaching because we're asking ourselves things that make us uncomfortable. We're asking ourselves to possibly give up some of the things that we have been doing in our life and change course, change direction, get back on your path. I just pray that Holy Spirit, you will convict us of what that is, that you will gently take our hand and bring us back to the path that you have created for us and all that that means. Help us to only hear your voice, to follow after you, to have a relationship with you, and to love you and and all that you are and all that you've done for us until you come again. We thank you for this time. We pray for those that are struggling, those that have lost loved ones, those that are have lost jobs or that are sick or that just need your healing touch, Lord. And I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will heal them, that that you will restore them, that you will provide for them, Lord, in ways that only you can, that they will know is because of you. We thank you that your word gives us promises to stand on and that by your stripes we are healed and we are whole and we do walk in divine health We thank you. We love you and we praise you. And we ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus who saves. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today as as we're making our journey to Easter Sunday. You're going to definitely want to stay tuned. Um, Next week we'll have a special service for Palm Sunday. And then, of course, there will be a wonderful Easter celebration celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, stepping into everything that he wants to give us with open hands. I pray that you have a great rest of your day, a blessed week. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.